Hey everybody, this is Tony. And this is Paul, and we're coming at you from the Friends for Life podcast, where we discuss the ongoing lives and issues of people with developmental disabilities to spark positive change in the field. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Making sure that individuals are reaching the goals they have set for themselves. That's one of the many goals of Assured Health Services. If you're looking for a residential care provider or searching for ADS services, Assured Health is your go-to place. Assured Health, helping others succeed. Learn more at assuredhealthohio.com or call 419-442-8066. So we're here at the Opera Conference, and we got Bethany and Becky here from OADSP. So what's been new? You've been on the podcast a few times now. We just saw each other at Synergy a few weeks ago. That was a good time. Yes. What what brings you here out to the Opera Conference? Oh, so we are here as a vendor, um, mm-hmm. talking with people about what we do, the way that we support direct support professionals, frontline supervisors, and other people that work in the field. Sweet. So. What's been new with OADSP since the last time we talked to you? Were, you at that time you were starting a podcast, and now you got the podcast going. So what you're, what are you talking about? What, what new topics are you hitting? Because we're trying to spread the message of. The- and why haven't we been on it? That's oh, my, oh, that's oh, my that's biggest. Yeah. I'm that guy. I'm so, the world. So you know when when um, when I first met you guys, we had these like grandiose ideas that you know our team's going to you know do this awesome podcast, and you know it, it's it's. It's going to be great. You know, we'll do it. And then like, well, we're going to do it next month. Oh, we'll do it the next month. (laughs) But then we finally realized we just don't have the capacity to do it ourselves. So we have contracted with a gentleman named David Rustio, and he is our podcast host. There you go. So, so. um, Shout out David Rustio. Yeah. So David's here. (laughs) He is here. So I'll introduce you guys. And you can get something on the calendar. So we have named the podcast. It's called The Direct Line. So the idea is that the direct line, this is the way that you can have a direct line. You come on the podcast, you have a direct line to direct support professionals. Direct support professionals have a direct line to anyone, you know, that's on our podcast, whether it's the DODD director, you guys, you know, other people in the field. We want to connect people. Goodness, I wish we had better thought processes. <laughs> and we just got rid of residential care and put podcasts. <laughs> That's what we do. We're just we're on the fly. We just like to be where the action's happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Becky, yeah. what is your role at OADSP, and uh, what are you doing? Well, uh, my official title is Director of Engagement, okay. and I do I do <laughs> several things at OADSP, but my main focus is the DSPU program, which is a high school program focused on those high school seniors, and we have a curriculum that um, high schools can onboard, and it's for the uh, senior year, and they work through a program that has um, the education component to mm-hmm. it, and then it has an internship component where they work in an agency provider that provides an EDD service, and then they also do a, um, a competency component to it where they earn badges through the National Alliance of Direct Support Professionals. And when they do all of those components, they earn um, credits or points towards their high school diploma. And then they also earn their certificate of initial proficiency through the Ohio Department of Education, which is um, a state a credential and then they also earn their national credential Jeez. so yeah so when they're finished you know they can pursue whatever goals they have in their life if they can be a DSP if they want to go to college they can be a DSP while they go to college and um, yeah work in our field hey, well, real quick I think something like that would have kept me from dropping out like, I, I, like it really would have because when I was in high school I swear there were only the standardized type of jobs you know, everyone, oh, and lawyer, doctor, right. firefighter, mm-hmm. like, but right. being a DSP is so much of all those components, honestly. Absolutely. Um, because you never know if you're going to have to drag somebody out of a fire. <laughs> yep, yep. And, it, and it's something to do, too, if you don't know what you want to do, what? right? It gives you something to do because it's a good foundation mm-hmm. if, if maybe it's not... Um, a firefighter isn't for you or a um, nurse isn't for you or a doctor isn't for you or you just don't know what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You can be a DSP for a long time and yes. figure out what you want to do, right? It's purpose driven and then, work. Yep, and then it's a great foundation that leads to any any of those avenues because if you want to be a nurse or you want to be a therapist or you want to be a business, you want to be a manager, you want to be um, a business owner, a CEO, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, it's going to be a good foundation because inevitably you're going to work and support someone with a disability
responsibility at some time in any of those careers. Amen to that. So it gives you a great foundation and it makes a better world. In well, the, that, end. Yes. the program itself sounds incredibly innovative and it's a smart way to get more DSPs coming in. Absolutely. So where did the vision for this program come from? Because that's just like, I would have never thought of that. That's a genius, right. genius idea. Well, I can speak to that, but I'm going to let Bethany uh, speak <laughs> to that because it's been around a long time, long time before yeah. me and she's been around a long time yeah. before me too. <laughs> so the program was founded actually back in 2014 as a partnership between OADSP and OPERA. Mm -hmm. So, and at, the way it came about is um, one, the, the opera leadership uh, attended Governor Kasich's State of the State address and Governor Kasich expressed a concern with the high school dropout rate. So just yeah. talking about yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, opera looked at it and said, gosh, we've got a workforce crisis. You know, we need, we need people. This would be a great way to like partner. So the original iteration of the program focused on students that were at risk of dropping out. Since then, we've really expanded the focus. It's for any high school student. You know, we primarily focus on seniors because they're ready to enter the workforce. Mm -hmm. And we have students that as they go through the program, they're able to work as direct support assistants. The Reliable Drug and Alcohol Testing Clinic is a leading provider and convenient source of pre-employment and occupational type testing. Their clinic provides services to a wide range of private businesses, healthcare facilities, and municipal and county courts. Reliable is an independent, locally owned clinic. As a result, they provide their services at a lower cost than the major hospitals, have faster turnaround times on test results, and eliminate the long waits typically incurred at these larger facilities. To learn more, visit ReliableDrugTest.com. That is... Yes. Like that's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, the, the the snap judgment to be able to the change career statuses um, because it does take me back to oh eight oh nine when we were going through the housing crisis. I couldn't find a job for the life of me. Um, I I was in in a transition. Um, I had a young child, and then. All of a sudden, I was like, you know what? I'm a DSP. I can go anywhere. I have great, I, I got all the great resume. Oh. Mm -hmm. And for eight months, I wasn't able to work because people with PhDs were actually taking my position that, I mean, again, due to the, the housing crisis at the time, but it wasn't in their hearts. It was not their, they didn't, they did it just uh Short term. Short term yep, yep, to grab yep, a yep. check. Right. But I think enabling this, especially with um, just the crisis in general of healthcare, like there, like we need more nurses. We mm -hmm. need more STNAs, CNAs, LPNs. Mm -hmm. Like these things are needed. And then, like you both have so graciously said, I mean, this is a perfect segue. Yes. Yes. And we have a lot of programs, even in the adult sector, you know, LPN or those kind of things mm -hmm. or STNA leading to that, that mm -hmm. um, even take our curriculum and put it with that, our phlebotomy mm -hmm. track, and they do um, our curriculum with that just to give that experience for right. those those careers. Um, it's like I said, it just any it lends to any career. Um, nursing, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's a good experience and good education and good skills to have. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of soft skills to build build into the curriculum as well. Well, yes. at, w when you have family and stuff aging, I mean, it, it'll feel nice just to at least have that understanding of how to give CPR, how to give some type of first aid, how to check if someone is now diabetic. You know, these are skills that we, even though if you're doing great and well, I mean, your, your loved one might need. So what do you think, uh, as kind of like on a deeper level, what do you think led to that switch between you couldn't find a job as a DSP and now we're scrambling in the field to get as many people working as possible? What do you think flipped that switch? I mean, I know there's been a lot that's happened in that time span, obviously, in the, in the world. But, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting thing, how it has changed so drastically. Yeah. I mean, I feel like in a way we've always been in some type of workforce crisis. I do remember probably back in the time frame you're speaking of, Tony, I worked for a provider organization and I wore many different hats as the program director. One of those hats was HR and, you know, interviewing people. And I remember, you know, interviewing, interviewing people that had master's degree. One lady, um, you know, she had went to law school 
but just mm. chose to not take the bar exam. And, you know, we were getting a lot of applicants, but they didn't stick with it. Yes. You know, and so, so you know, even though we did see an uptick in in that, we really didn't didn't see all of our positions being filled for any any long period of time. Yeah, and if if you don't have the heart in this, you're never going to really have a true understanding start to this. Ooh, bars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is there anything new that you're excited about? New programs you're working on? New stuff going on at OADSP? Or I know you're involved in a lot of different conferences and stuff. Is there anything exciting for you personally, either of you, that's really like kind of getting you going? Um, gosh, well, leadership development is com- becoming such a big mm, focus definitely. for us, and, and I I just love the topic. It's probably one of my my. Mm-hmm. It, it is my passion. You know, I started in the field when I was 19 years old as a direct support professional, and there wasn't a roadmap. Mm-hmm. And and one of our um, one of our leadership programs is called Leadership Launchpad, and it's for leaders of all levels. So Tony, you and I have talked about yes, it before. Yes. I'm waiting for you to sign up. <laughs> um, <laughs> slowly but surely, I promise. <laughs> so um, so you know, we have direct support professionals, frontline supervisors, CEOs, everyone in between. We've had SSAs go through it, and it, it's a really great way for people to to really kind of see the bigger picture and see their mm-hmm. role in the IDD ecosystem and figure out how they can impact the field. Yes. You know, so that we're very passionate about that. We host those uh, two times a year and and we do keep those classes small, you know, usually mm-hmm. 25 to 30 people. So we realize, you know, that, you know, it not everyone can participate, get away from work for 3 days. So we've also started doing um, some leadership development within organizations. Oh, good. So that's called the direct leadership certificate and we have just a host of topics we usually do some surveying with organizations to figure out what their staff want and need. And um, here coming up in um, early 2024, we're going to be going into Licking County and working with a variety of programs. Their county board is going to support the direct leadership That's certificate. Awesome. Shout out to Licking County, one, yeah, of, our, yeah, one of our fun yeah, counties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and just so when we've, we've been developing this over the last couple of years and one of the organizations we worked with is here in the Columbus area. And my favorite kind of series of DLC, um, what do we want to call them? DLC courses that we did with him okay. was on advocacy. Mm. So we we basically did kind of like some fourth grade, you know, government lessons to kind of remember yeah. like, oh yeah, this is how our state's set up. <laughs> this is how these rules and laws come to be. Amen. And this is what we need to do when they suck. <laughs> when they're not working for us, you know, how to advocate. Right? You know, and we, so we went through this whole process and at the end, um, we had people actually give mock testimony. So learn what it was like to go, mm. you know, stand up in front of people and to testify for something right. that you believed in. Yeah. And you know, that that really influenced us being able to support some people to give testimony for the recent budget, you know, the historic mm-hmm. budget yes. that just went it, through. Going down, guys, yeah. at the beginning of the year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, want to, we don't want to take up too much time. I know you got places to be, and we want to thank you again for coming here for your few few minutes uh rushing through the podcast so thank you so much what you're doing is awesome it's really helpful especially on the advocacy side that stuff's really amazing yes and really quick any shout outs to any seminars that you've been to today anybody sticks out like what what's uh what's your favorite oh so well we've been pretty much tied to the booth okay so um, i (laughs) did i did sneak away for a little bit this morning and i saw the keynote and that was awesome okay cool you know um to to see someone you know up up on the stage that has been in broadway shows you know he has autism and you know has really found his calling now sharing his story so that was nice Well, you worked that booth. <laughs> yeah, and well, I'll just give a shout out to Opera. Thank you for putting on the conference. And this year, being at the booth, they've done a game where mm-hmm. all the vendors got to put in like something personal about themselves and everybody had a guess kind of who it was about wow. the vendor. And it's been nice because we've had a lot of fun with it. They come to your station, so it draws people to your station. And then they have to guess like who it's about. So, you <laughs> know, we've had a lot of fun with that. And I know it was a lot of work for Melissa to put all that together. So thank you, um, Melissa, and thank you, Opera. It was a lot of fun. Shout awesome. out to Opera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks. THS Remote Supports is clearly focused on improving independent living through dynamic 
and personalized services. Their systems have been carefully developed and perfected to ensure that everyone receives the best care through the least intrusive means possible. Located in Cincinnati, Ohio, they've spent over 20 years providing in-home supports to individuals with disabilities. If you or someone you know is looking for a remote service provider, go to THSRSS.com or call 513-882-9088.